Welcome to another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. I'm Professor Jim Powers. This video will demonstrate the use of cursors on the tray screen of the OWLTREK OTDR and will show the proper placement of cursors concerning the different aspects of trace analysis. Once the OTDR trace has been acquired, the trace will appear on the LCD screen and the distance and optical power information will be updated. Trace information is color-coded. Red and green informational text refers to the distance position of the red and green cursors. Blue informational text refers to the difference in distance and optical power between the red and green cursors, as well as the reflectance level of the most reflective event between the red and green cursors. Orange informational text refers to the position and power level of the final reflective event relative to the beginning of the trace. Most of the time, this refers to the end of the fiber. However, there are some scenarios where the final reflective event is not the actual end of the fiber. For example, a reflective break mid-span, or a ghost or echo from a previously highly reflective event that appears on the trace. It is the responsibility of the technician to visually verify that the end of the fiber on the trace refers to the actual end of the optical fiber. The cursor menu option activates or deactivates one or more cursors. The lock menu option locks or unlocks one or more active cursors in their current distance position. When one or more active cursors are selected and not locked, the left and right arrow buttons move the cursors left and right. Holding these buttons speeds up the cursor movement on the screen. When no cursors are selected, the left and right arrow buttons pan the screen left or right. When one or more active cursors are selected, the up and down buttons zoom in or out on the active cursors. It is highly recommended to lock the cursors so they do not lose their distance position. When no cursors are selected, the up and down arrow buttons zoom in or out on the center of the screen. This portion of the video will provide a basic overview of the different aspects of trace analysis including event location, fiber length measurement, fiber attenuation or loss measurement, and reflectance measurement. Proper trace analysis requires a high level of skill, knowledge, and expertise with OTDRs. Improper trace analysis could result in network downtime and additional repair costs. The primary function of an OTDR is to locate events along a span of optical fiber. On an OTDR trace, these events appear as deviations from an otherwise gently sloping line. Before continuing, however, it will be helpful to review the types of events that may appear on an OTDR trace. There are two types of events detectable by an OTDR, Fresnel or reflective, and backscatter or non-reflective. Fresnel events are caused by glass-to-air boundaries in the optical fiber which cause a high amount of light to be directly reflected back towards the OTDR. Common Fresnel events include breaks, shatters, connector end faces, interconnections such as patch panels, or even the end of the optical fiber. Fresnel events appear as sharp spikes on an OTDR trace. Backscatter events are caused by the intrinsic properties of the optical fiber. The makeup of the optical fiber scatters light in all directions with only a small portion of the light returning back towards the OTDR. Common backscatter events are splices, macrobends, and microbends. Backscatter events appear as sudden drops in the slope of an OTDR trace. Here's a sample trace which includes five distinct events, four Fresnel events, and one backscatter event. Event number one shows a typical reflective event due to the connector end face on a dead zone box. Event number two is another reflective event, this time caused by an interconnection found at a patch panel. Event number three is a backscatter event and could be a fusion or mechanical splice. Event number four is a reflective event at an interconnection using high return loss angled physical contact connectors. Event number five is another reflective event, which is probably the end of the fiber link, but could also indicate a severe enough break where no other events can be detected beyond the break. 
When analyzing traces, the slope of the line will appear to dip to a lower level after the event. The amount of drop indicates a certain amount of loss or attenuation of the event. If the slope of the line after the event changes, either flatter or steeper, this means that the index of refraction of the fiber before the event is different from the index of refraction of the fiber after the event. This indicates that two different fibers, possibly from different fiber manufacturers, have been connected or spliced together. Another rule of thumb is that tall spikes usually indicate flat polish connectors or other highly reflective events such as breaks, shatters, or the end of the fiber, and that short spikes usually indicate angled polished connections. Proper cursor placement is critical in determining the exact distance to an event, as well as the relative effects the event has on the optical power traveling through the event. In general, when placing cursors, the red cursor should be placed before the event and the green cursor should be placed after the event. The trace information will change to indicate the distance and relative power in dB at the point where each cursor intersects the OTDR trace. By placing cursors at the beginning and ending points of the trace, the distance between the cursors will show a close approximation of the total length of the optical fiber link, as well as a close approximation of the total fiber link loss. The red cursor should be placed before the first reflective event, and the green cursor should be placed before the last reflective event, each at a point where the line begins to spike. In this example, the total link length is 24,718 meters and the end-to-end -end link loss is 7.43 dB. The fiber attenuation of certain sections of an optical fiber link can be determined by placing the cursors on the backscatter slope at the beginning and ending points of the section of optical fiber to be measured. The red cursor should be placed at the beginning of the section of fiber to be measured and the green cursor should be placed at the end of the section of fiber to be measured. In this example, this section of fiber has 1.76 dB of loss and is 7,040 meters long. Using this information, the dB per kilometer can be calculated and compared to the fiber manufacturer's attenuation specification. The reflectance of a specific event can be determined by placing the cursors on the backscatter line on either side of the event. The OTDR will show the reflectance in dB of the most reflective event between the cursors. In this example, the reflective event being measured has a reflectance of negative 34.26 dB. This has been another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. For more information about additional instructional videos or OWL fiber optic test equipment in general, please visit OWL's website at owl-inc.com. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Thanks for watching.